Welcome back everybody. So I've been getting a lot of questions recently about quilts, backpacking quilts. And I think quilts have finally started to make their way more towards the mainstream and more people are starting to hear about them. Although most big gear companies aren't making many yet, people are starting to hear about Enlightened Equipment, Z-Packs, and some other cottage companies that are making quilts and are wondering, should they be switching to a quilt? Well, this video is going to be all about quilts and why you should switch to one. And notice I say why you should and not, I don't really leave it a question because honestly I feel like quilts are the next step in backpacking and they just make a lot of sense. So let's get into it. As you'll soon see in this video, there are a lot of reasons to switch to a quilt, but the first one I'm going to cover is one that people probably care the most about, which is weight. So on average, quilts are going to be a lot lighter than your traditional sleeping bag, and there's a good reason for that. The whole reason a quilt exists is because in a sleeping bag, the insulation that's underneath you, whether it be down or synthetic, is just getting compressed. And what that means is this insulation that weighs almost half the weight of the entire sleeping bag is underneath your body, it's being squished between you and the pad, and it's not providing any insulation really. Maybe a tiny bit, but not enough to be useful. And the real warmth underneath you should come from your sleeping pad. So the idea behind a quilt is you cut out that insulation underneath you that's not being used anyways. You take off the hood, which really isn't necessary until you get into really, really cold temperatures. And most people carry a beanie or something like that, or a hooded uh, down jacket that you can substitute as a hood anyways. So a quilt cuts out the hood, it cuts out the back of the sleeping bag, and it saves weight that way. Additionally, you're going to find that most quilts kind of forego the big heavy zippers, extra pockets, and a lot of the extraneous stuff you'll find on sleeping bags that really just adds weight. So what you're seeing here is my DIY quilt that I used on the CDT and on the PCT, and I put it on a scale. And if you discount the weight of the stuff sack it's in, it comes out to around 20 ounces, or close to 567 grams. And that's for a what I estimate to be about a 10 degree quilt. And I've used it down to 10 degrees and it's been very warm. And I honestly, I think it could go even further. So that gives you an idea of how cold you can go with just that little bit of weight, which is much lighter than most sleeping bags on the market. But to give you a better idea, I'm going to compare two of the kind of most popular versions of a sleeping bag and a quilt. And so what you're seeing here is a Western Mountaineering Alpenlight, which is a very good sleeping bag. I would highly recommend it if you're looking for a sleeping bag. And you're also seeing an Enlightened Equipment Revelation quilt. And just to compare the two, the Alpenlight, they're both rated to 20 degrees Fahrenheit. And if you look at the Alpenlight specs online, you'll see that a regular size 6-foot sleeping bag comes out to around 31 ounces or 879 grams. And if you look at the Revelation quilt, it is 20 degrees as well, but it comes out to 20 ounces or 567 grams. So you're saving an entire 11 ounces just by switching to a quilt, and you're still getting that 20 degree rating. Now if we look at the price, which is the next thing I want to focus on with quilts, you're going to see that there's a really significant difference in price between sleeping bags and quilts. And it's pretty astonishing. So just sticking with this frame of reference here, the Alpenlight 20 is going to run on average around $555 online. Now if you go to Enlightened Equipment's site, you'll see that you can get the stock Revelation 20 for about $250, so that's less than half the price, and same function, lighter weight, it's just a no-brainer, honestly. And I'm sure there are going to be lots of questions popping up on this video here about how to use a quilt and stuff like that, and I will be answering those in future videos, but uh, I'll save that for later, so let's keep going. So as you can see, weight is a huge benefit, cost is a huge benefit, and even if you choose to go the DIY route like I did, you're going to save even more and still end up with a pretty decent quality product, mm -hmm. assuming you can sew. <laughs> but anyways, the final thing I want to focus on is comfort. And that means both temperature comfort and 
sleeping comfort as well. So I'm not going to spend too much time justifying quilt temperature comfort other than to say that most ratings I've seen are accurate and you're just you're going to be as comfortable in a 20 degree quilt as you are in a 20 degree sleeping bag. There's not a huge difference there. A lot of people get caught up on the fact that quilts don't have hoods and at least for me and for everyone I know that has switched to a quilt it's just a non-issue. When it starts to get cold enough that you're going to be needing a hood you're either going to have a beanie or a balaclava or a hooded jacket that you can throw on and that can function perfectly well as your hood and you're doubling up use on gear and you're saving weight. So one of the places that quilts really shine over bags in my opinion is in sleeping comfort. And as you've seen in this clip I've kind of been demonstrating different positions and ways of sleeping in a quilt. But when it comes down to it, compared to a traditional mummy cut bag, you just have so much more room and so much more chance for comfort with a quilt. And this extra comfort in a quilt can be attributed to several factors. First off, these quilts are a lot more roomy than a normal mummy cut bag. So you're going to have room to sleep on your side if you're a side sleeper, pull up your knees, do a kind of fetal position sleeping like that, if that's how you sleep, which is how I sleep actually. And you just have more room for whatever way you sleep and for shifting around in the night. It's a lot more comfortable. You're not kind of stuck in this cocoon that gets twisted around your body. And so it's just really nice to have these options. And in addition to that, you also have the option to stick your feet out if your feet get too hot or pull off the top of the quilt if your chest is hot but your feet and legs are cold. And it's just a lot more diverse and it, in my experience, it's worked so much better than a traditional bag has for me. Well that about sums everything up. I wanted to make this video just because I've been getting a lot of questions on quilts and how to use quilts, how to buy a quilt, and I just wanted to get this video out there first and let other people know that quilts are not only a viable option but probably the best option in my mind for backpacking. And there's just so many benefits compared to a normal bag that it doesn't make sense to go with a bag anymore. So I'm sure this video will spawn some questions, and I'll be addressing those in future videos, so stay tuned. And also, while I'm here, I'd like to give a huge thanks to all of my patrons on Patreon, who just helped me reach my very first goal, which is eliminating ads from my website. So thanks to my supporters, I will no longer have ads on my website, and I am extremely happy about that. I've always hated having ads. It's just kind of dirty. But they're gone now, so that's pretty cool. Also, I've got some great goals coming up that would be amazing to reach, including getting better audio and better video equipment. So if you like what you see, maybe consider supporting it. I'd really appreciate it. And most of all, thanks for watching. I'll see you guys next time.